do you consider to be the major problems with Darwinian theory? Well, there are so many, it's uh, hard to know where to start. I suppose the first place to start is with the fossil evidence. Uh, Darwin said in 1859 that he acknowledged that the, that was dead against his theory, and he just had to assume the fossil record was very incomplete in order to save the theory from the otherwise devastating criticism of the fossil experts like, for example, Professor Louis Agassiz of uh, Harvard. Now, the fascinating thing is that the fossil record hasn't gotten any better in the intervening century and a third in spite of the fact that it has been explored and interpreted by people who were practically desperate to confirm the Darwinian picture. What we found in the 1980s was that the fossil record was still characterized by two important features. One is sudden appearance. When new things appear, they appear just as they are. There's no visible history of step-by-step -step development from earlier forms. Uh, and then what, after they have appeared, they stay the same. That's called stasis in the jargon of the trade. Uh, so that once you get the shark or the horseshoe crab or anything else into existence, it stays the same throughout its tenure in Earth. There's variation within that type, but no step-by-step -step development into something different, no directional change of the Darwinian kind. And this, I might add, is not the absence of evidence. It is positively documented. Uh, so you see, the, the fossil record uh, is and remains, uh, on the whole, completely different from the picture of it you would expect from the Darwinian ideology. Now that's, I think, the, the first difficult point that you would say. Um, the second one um, is that the mechanism remains unproved um, and, indeed, even really disproved. By the mechanism, I'm referring to what I call in lectures the blind watchmaker thesis, which is that the random purposeless force of mutation, uh, essentially DNA copying errors, generates the creative change, and that this is then sifted and preserved by natural selection, so that you get the building up of complex organs, such as eyes and brains and hearts and livers and kidneys and all those things by this step by tiny step process of creativity and that's of course also how you get the changing of one kind of thing into something else. Um, you can see that by this theoretical process that that whole gulf in the Precambrian era where you have nothing at all between the single-celled organisms and then the animal phyla is particularly hard to explain because you have to have just a complete universe of things going in all directions down there that's been lost. Um, but any, in any event, this mechanism uh, can't be confirmed. Uh, it isn't reflected in the fossil record. Uh, it isn't reflected in the world of experiment or, or experience. Um, and and uh, uh, so it's, uh, it's a total fiction, really. I, I said in one chapter of my book that it's as, as, as invisible as supernatural creation by God. Now. Um, the third uh, a major uh, a problem, I would say, which is really related to the first two, um, is that what the Darwinians did was to take a theory that was valid at what we call the micro level. That is to say, it actually does explain how if you get, oh, say, a pair of birds that migrate to an island in the ocean and then are cut off from the mainland, and they give birth you know, to a lot of descendants through inbreeding. There's mutation. Uh, there's a certain amount of selection. Um, that you'll get variation. Finches that migrated to a, an island in the Galapagos uh, group uh, did vary and change. Um, but they're still finches. They, uh, you know, they, they got there as finches and they still are finches with variations. So the Darwinian theory explains that kind of change. But it was extrapolated without any justification in the evidence to explain how you get finches in the first place, how you get birds in the first place, how you get animals in the first place. And that was all just a wild extrapolation. Um, and it's, I think, really generally recognized that this is the great weak point of the theory, that it's been arbitrarily extended. Uh, so that you see, if you ask, how does uh, a bacterium become a butterfly? The answer you will get is, oh, look at those finches on the Galapagos. They changed, so the bacterium can change into a butterfly, can't it? Well, it's a ridiculous uh, 
uh, extrapolation if you've got a critical mind at all, but the Darwinians are committed to it because if they didn't do that, they wouldn't have an answer. And in their view, a bad answer is better than no answer at all, so that's what they give you.